On today's episode of AC Designs Garage, I'm going to show you how to fill all these little small holes on your firewall with a MIG gun and a super easy trick on how to do it the fastest way. Coming up. All right, guys, here's our uh, holes that we're going to fill. There's a few of them. We've got to mark them, make sure we don't fill the wrong ones because this goes to the braces to the uh, core support and holds the fender on, so we know to keep them. Uh, we're going to take this one out, this one out, this one out, this one out. I'm saving this for next week, so if you want to see how I, I shave all this and fill this, with the mid gun we're going to do this one next week and also i'm going to take this one and maybe this one because we're going back on this this is my 65 c10 we call patches i'm gonna go back with a vintage air system on it so we're going to shave a lot of these holes and i think we're going to do some of these maybe in a later video too well we may hit these today too yeah let's go ahead and get those taken care of uh some of the factory wire and harness stuff i'm gonna get rid of i think i'm gonna do like a uh, hot rod like a 12 circuit hot rod style wiring harness in it we're gonna to try to hide all that but we're gonna really jump on this in the next couple weeks and make sure you subscribe like all that good jazz hit the notifications because we're gonna to try to slick this thing out like Boyd used to do back in the 90s is the way I want to do it my plan on this truck it's got a really nice patina to it and I'm leaving it uh, the inside we're gonna slick paint and the firewall we're gonna slick paint the same color whatever we decide this is not the factory color that's on here. We're probably going to go with this. So this from here down, it's already raptor lined on the bottom. So from here down, we're going to do it base cleared slick. And I think I'm going to do the inside the same blue. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think I ought to do. As for the machine we're using today, we're using my old trusty Millermatic 185. It's a pretty old machine. I think we got this machine around 1994, 95, sometime around there when I was in high school. And uh, she's still kicking good. Uh, I'm going to show you the settings and wire and stuff we're going to use real quick. Uh, we're using the ER70 S-6 023 wire. That's what I like to use on all my sheet metal stuff. Until I get up over or get starting getting closer to 8th inch or so, that's about the size of wire I use. And we're running the 7525 Argon CO2 gas mix. We're going to run it at 20 CFH. Right here is the 023. We're going to go over to... I measured it, it's like 18, 17, 18 gauge. It calls for a one on the voltage and a 45 on the wire speed. I like my welds, when I, especially when I'm uh, spot welding and stuff, I like it just a tick hotter to where the weld will just wet out and flatten down real good and penetrate good. So I think we're gonna go over to the 16 gauge setting and like a two and I'm probably gonna do around a 45. And I'm gonna show you a cool little trick on how to fill these holes without cutting a ton of little pieces of sheet metal to put in there. So let's get over here and get her set up and get ready to go. First off, we're gonna get, she's on three, we're gonna go, let's go to about 45. We'll go two and 45 on it and see how it does. So what we're gonna do on this is instead of cutting a bunch of them, cause this here is probably a, I'm gonna say close to a three eighths hole. We're gonna grind all these up, the ones that we're gonna do. Like this one, I'm gonna show you how I make a patch for this. But these here, I'm probably not gonna make a patch. We're probably gonna put a copper backing spoon behind it and just weld it up and I'll show you how to do that. That's the reason for waiting till next week to do this because I can reach my hand back and back it. Because if we shaved this, I planned on doing this today, but if we done this, I'd have to have somebody inside the truck and. I'm by myself down here. Dad's running the airline, new copper airlines and stuff for the shop. And a lot of you guys work by yourselves. So kind of plan out your job like this. And like I said, next week, if you want to watch how we shave this, I'm going to probably make it big enough to get rid of some of these little dimples right here. But we're just going to do flat. I'm not going to do any sunk bead rolling. And I'm going to save this little recess thing. We may want to use it somewhere else on the truck and flip it around. It'll have that cool little drop recess thing. All right, guys, here's a little tip to keep your little roll locks in. As you can tell what part of the country I'm from, Duke's Mayonnaise, I ain't no other. But anyway, this is what we use. We keep all our old Duke's Mayonnaise jars, and then you just put your uh, drip, whatever you use. I'm going to use a 80. A lot of times I'll keep these, like, you're going to wear out, like, the edge of these the most. So these, the edges are wore out that you want to cut real clean with. I just uh, throw them in an extra one like this and use them up because all this is still good on it. So, but I'm gonna start with 80 probably, uh, unless I have anything rough, I'm not going to 60. We just don't want to get the metal too thin and gouge it up, but start with 80 if you need to, jump up to 60. <laughs> All 
All right, guys, here's one last tool I forgot to show you I'm going to be using now. If you've been following my channel for a while, probably a hundred videos ago, we made this little uh, shear. And if you guys are around much uh, sheet metal fabrication, they have a thing called a Beverly shear, which is a throatless shear. They're awesome. They're expensive. So when I was cutting the roses, I linked the how to build this and how I made the roses out of sheet metal because I, I really built this to do the roses with. So I linked both of these up here in a card somewhere that you can watch after this video. But these things are super cheap, super easy to make, and basically I made them out of a set of these. You use the yellow handled ones. I think these are the these will turn right and left handed. You know they're color coded like uh, red and green and yellow. These are the yellow ones that'll cut either way. So what you do is you put your sheet metal in here, and you can just sit here and uh, turn your metal. And I'll show you on that oval piece because we're actually going to have to this piece here. We're actually going to have to cut one. I mean you could blob this up, but it just make a mess. I don't like to go any bigger than this when I'm just backing it with the copper so we're gonna make a piece for that one right there so and that's what we're going to use and also as for the backer you can go buy the little spoons but you can either just get your old piece of copper and uh flatten it out give you a flat spot on it or you can take copper tubing this is what dad's running in there for our airline take copper tubing and just hammer it flat but be careful with this copper because it is a heat sink and that heat will travel up to your hand real quick so Either use a big pair of gloves when you're backing it the weld to or clamp or something like that. All right, guys, first thing you really need to do, we got those areas ground back there. And uh, I got this at Harbor Freight, one of these welding blanks. These things are nice because it's got a fairly decent seat in it. But just uh, give it a look around and make sure there's nothing that's going to, no papers or anything in the floor that could catch on fire. Because uh, right here is the holes that's going to be, we're going to be welding up. All these up in here and you know it's gonna drop sparks and stuff all on the floor so just give it a good check and make sure there's no insulation or down or anything that can catch on fire and uh do you a good 15 20 minute fire watch before you go back up to your house or something i'm gonna leave the door open on this as i weld just so i can periodically come in here and check it all right guys a couple things you got to have is your little uh copper piece we're gonna run it back up in here like i said make sure you got a glove or clamp or something now the weld wants it'll kind of stick just a little but it won't melt into it that's the cool thing about the copper you can spray it with some of the anti-splatter stuff if you want to it helps but you just basically uh put it up against there and it'll block the hole for you and it helps with the uh, the back side of it not getting as bad as like it poking back through it puts a block off so you just uh like just doing this hole here you can see that you can Put it right there basically and we'll start on the outside we'll work our way around the edge and then cool it really good because you don't want to warp it and uh just keep going in until it's filled up we'll grind it off and pull this thing off like i said don't hold this bare handed because this thing is a heat sink and that heat just goes straight up and it'll burn the mess out of you and it hurts don't ask me how i know i went ahead and knocked our wire speed up to about 60 it was all 45 and it was uh burning a little much off so since we're running our heat up a little higher, I went ahead and bumped it up to 60 so it don't melt away too much. Like I said, I like to run a little hot where the wet in good, but.
right, now when you get it down to around a pencil size hole, you can, uh, you can go ahead and just weld it up without that backer. One thing to be a little careful of too, also a lot of people don't think about, is your grinding will cause it to get real hot too. So every now and then cool it off. All right, now guys, I'm gonna show you that you can fill it without a backer. Say you get into a pinch and you just can't get to it. Sometimes it happens. So I'm gonna show you on this one. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna start and we're just gonna like about half of it here. We're just gonna zap, 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 and just go around the outside edge and just basically build a ring around it. Then we'll cool it off. And then we'll come back and just go to the inside of that ring until it's totally done. We'll grind it off. And I'll show you, it can be done now. It gets a little messier on the backside, but I'm gonna grind the backside of these wells because we're gonna wrap their line inside of the uh, floorboard and firewall and all that stuff anyway. So I'm just gonna show you on this that you can do it without a backer if you can't get to it. Say you already had this shaved and you decided later. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that real quick. Just take your time, don't get it too hot, run around it, cool it off, you know, don't get too much in a hurry. A hurry will end up costing you more time in the long run. Now we have the ring on it. I'm gonna zap around about half of this and then come back to this side. We're slowly working up here. Sir. And you can come back and see, I got just a little bit of divot left here I gotta get. Give her a cool off real quick. I'm gonna walk around and show you the back side of the ones that we've done. There's the one we just finished. It was on the outside edge and that's the one we backed up there. And another good thing about backing this right here is it keeps a lot of the spark from flying in too. So it's kind of like a, a double protection for you.
We'll give y'all a good look at it real quick up close before I grind it off. As you can see, it don't take but a few minutes. I mean, this this here, I'll edit some of it out so or speed it up so it's not boring you, but literally, I can do these in about three minutes. These uh, holes here are like a three eighths. I wouldn't suggest going any bigger than this, doing this. A lot of people would say cut these, but I mean, these are so small, by the time you cut them out, you're just wasting time. Three eighths, maybe a half inch would be pushing it on size, but like I said, these here, I can knock out in a couple minutes. Some of these are not too bad, but yeah, this is just a cool way to do it. I'm gonna cut this, cut a piece out and show you how I would patch one like this and we get the zap in this and we should have this wrapped up and I hope this little tip and trick will help you guys. And it's not that hard, it's just take your time. Like these are not gonna have, we could probably high build this. It's probably not gonna have any any uh, warpage hardly at all due to the fact we cold it and everything, so. Yeah, just take your time. You cut down your body work and everything. We can probably just skim this, prime it after we cut this out, and all this will be nice and slick. So let's get to doing a little more arcing and sparking. All right, guys, I'm going to use the good old 3M tape that I use on everything. Every, every good body shop guy's got their tape. I use it for everything. Sometimes it's controversial because I use tape to hold metal up here, and it works pretty good. Some people don't think so, but hey, it works for me, so... Find some dirt, it ain't hard to find around here. Just rub over it like that. You can take your fingernail and run in here. Cause what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and cut this out and stick it to the piece of sheet metal and just uh, cut it out around it and we'll get it in there. So we'll just pull this off right here. Kind of embosses it a little bit. And uh, you can see it so we'll just We'll cut that out and just uh, stick it to the sheet over here and I'll, I'll show you our little uh, sheet metal shear I talked earlier about that I done a video on years ago, a few years ago, how you can make it. They're super cheap and they work great, but this thing will cut corners and circles. Not everybody can afford a five, $600 Beverly shear, whatever the things cost now. That's pretty close. We'll, close enough to grind. We'll get it in there. So let's get over here on this. Uh, like I said, I'm using the same thing. This is a 17 gauge, 17, 18 gauge what this is. So that's what we're going to put in it. All right, all we're going to do is we're going to get this up to the end as close as we can get it. And uh, we're just going to go around that thing and cut it out. Takes hardly any pressure at all. cut this off where it's a little easier to handle. Like I said, this is this is a 18 gauge, I think it's about 17, but it cuts this pretty easily. If you've ever cut with hand shears, you know how hard they are to cut. What you do is you just barely roll down and I'll turn this as we go. And we'll go ahead and cut this off. You have to watch these things, they're pretty sharp. Just be careful with it. And we'll take the grinder and get it just a little closer. But yeah, you guys should go out and make one of these things. They work awesome. I'm going to give you a hammer and hammer that flat real quick. Good as snuff, not as dusty. That's pretty close. We'll have to do a little grinding and shaping to it. We'll get it in here. All right, now for where the controversy comes in. Everybody says you can't do this. Trust me, this works great. And some people's gonna say it don't, but I always have tape on me being a body shop guy. I've used, and my reasoning, more for TIG weld than really the MIG weld. Easy to hold. 
Actually, let's that down. I gotta grind this off the top just a little. We'll round that top up real quick, but it just makes it easy. And when you're TIG welding, the something about the magnet just causes the arc to wander. It's not as bad with MIG welding, but you do this, you don't have to. I mean, this will hold it good, true, and flat. So let's get this ground real quick. Basically, you just want to get it to where it barely fits, and that's the good bare hands. Just be careful, make sure stuff's not hot, but you just want it to fit flush. And what I'm gonna do is right now, this down here is nice, so I'm gonna put my tack right here. All right, now we got this, and it's best to use your bare hands. It's good and flush, so I'm gonna actually start the tack on the actual firewall and then roll up to it. Don't try to start in the middle, especially when they're like this because sometimes it'll push it in and you'll get all set so I start down here and just roll up to it there she is now how's that work looks like it worked good to me and after it's cold real good you want to check it you get me a little hammer ball peen body hammer whatever you need That's dead flush right there, and that's what you want. If it's in a little bit like this, you can come back and just bump it a little bit out if you need to. And just get it till it, till it feels right, good and flush. So we're gonna get us a, a tack, we're gonna do a tack at the top. Feels a little good. It feels like it's just out just a tick. If your fingernail will catch it, it's out just a hair. And you don't have to whale on it. All right, feels good. We'll do the two corners here. Then we'll start to burn it in. All right, guys, well, check it out. This stuff is looking pretty good. I'm gonna come back with that cool purple disc and zhuzh this up, make this look real nice and shiny, but I mean, that's good and flat. That's where our big slot was, and then we had the holes and the holes, so I'm gonna get back and I'm gonna grind these right here. I'm gonna zap this one real quick, and we're gonna get these other few in here that we got, and we're gonna wrap this video up real quick.
All right, guys, we're going to take that grinding disc off and put one of these jewels on here and just do a little uh, cleanup real quick on it. We'll be finished up for this week. Make sure you stay tuned next week to see us shave that piece right there. I may do it TIG or whatever if you want me to. Uh, just drop down a comment. You want to see that done in MIG or TIG? Just let me know. Shoo-wee, guys, that stuff's looking good, ain't it? I mean, it's pretty good. It would take a little bit of body work, but not a whole lot, but it's gonna look a whole lot better with all them holes gone. Like I said, we still got a few more we gotta decide. Like, next week, we're gonna take this out. I don't know how far. I'm maybe gonna come out to here so I can get rid of these dimples. So we'll come out here and cut this out and meg or tig, whichever one y'all decide, that's what I'm gonna do. So look for that next week. Got all up in the tunnel done. Had to decide whether we're gonna cut this out or not yet. Just still uh, open for discussion. But yeah, turned out pretty good. Probably about two or three hours worth of work to do them few little holes and stuff. I still gotta get the back side of it. Ground down, get ready for the raptor liner on the inside, but she's starting to take shape. Hope you guys are enjoying this content. Got plenty more coming up. Like we're gonna do the bottom of the doors and I'm gonna re faux patina it. I know that's a big deal. People don't like it, but this truck's already patinaed, so we're gonna do the metal work on it and then I'm gonna faux patina it back to where you can't really tell us anything been done to it. It'll just be good and solid, but. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed that video on patches and welding them small little holes up. Make sure you stay tuned next week. We're gonna weld the bigger one up. We may mig it, tig it, whatever you guys decide is what we're gonna do. And remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We gone.